The Spirit of the Lord is upon St. Francis Church. We have been called to proclaim God's glory to all people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In these three words that conclude every worship service, we express our abundant determination and joy to proclaim the glory of God to all people, following the example of Jesus and Francis of Assisi. In this season of State of the Union addresses, the state of our St. Francis Union is strong and with every action we are growing even stronger. On this annual meeting Sunday, the second reading beautifully coincides with a reminder of the fundamental meaning of whom we are as church, dating back to the early church, the time of Jesus and Paul. In the letter of Paul, the church is described as the body of Christ, using the human body as the way to understand our union in Jesus Christ. The human body functions best when all of our parts and when all the parts are fully related to one another. It is painful to observe the way the brain sometimes in various illnesses or as the result of trauma does not send fluid messages to the body to walk, talk, swallow, and speak. Like the human body, Paul tells us that the church is the body of Christ. Paul tells us that the church is built and most healthy when it has all the diversity of gifts, prophets, teachers, healers, and leaders. It is my role through my annual sermon and address to report to you on the strength of our body, the church, and to encourage further ways to stretch our love to proclaim even more boldly the glory of God to all people. We celebrate our growth and we are always growing into God's image. The need to grow does not reveal weakness, but rather the Spirit constantly calling us to grow into the fullness of God's love and grace. The impact behind today's readings is so that all people, when they encounter the people of St. Francis, will also say, Alleluia, 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 with our same trust, determination, and undeterred joy. There is a great temptation on annual meeting Sunday to say that a well-managed, mission-oriented church is sufficient, and we can go home satisfied that we understand our life as a church. We've been successful. All of these areas of work are critically important to our congregational vitality, living the gospel, viability, and sustainability. Your vestry leaders have worked hard and have accomplished greatly. And yet, our primary determination and relentless joy is rooted in Christ Jesus' Trinitarian love. Our relentless determination and joy in our weekly alleluias is rooted in our abundant love of the healing, crucified, and resurrected Christ. Our love is expressed in all of our actions. And what does this love that holds our body, the Church of St. Francis, together look like? There are three kinds of love that I wish to discuss. Eros, Philos, and Agape. Eros is romantic love based on the covenant between two people. Philos is the love between two friends where I love you because you love me. Agape love is based on God's love through God's Son, Jesus. Agape love is unconditional love. When we commit to agape love, we commit to love one another without expectation of return. In the life of many congregations, the love of one another is based on Philo's love. You love your priest, and he or she loves you back. In congregations based on Philo's love, members and their priests take care of one another. Philo's based congregations are not always aware of the needs beyond their community, beyond their friendships. The people of these congregations are not always aware of who is not at the table, who has not been fed, who has not had a drink, and who has no shelter. These congregations are inwardly focused 
and often on only a few members' needs versus the needs of the whole parish. I've come to admire the way the people of St. Francis strive to live and serve through an agape love, following the healing, crucified, and resurrected Christ. A few stories this past year really embody these principles. Kathy Sheehan saw a need to bring prayer squares to people with HIV in Kenya and asked how the people of St. Francis can help. Edie Taylor expressed to me her concern about the Syrian refugees and wondered what the Episcopal Church was doing about it. Nan Rock recently came to me to express her concern that the people of Flint, Michigan have clean water during their water emergency. Nan asked, how might the people of St. Francis help? These are just a few stories of expressed concerns in emerging ministries among us. There are many more expressions of agape love through our weekly senior produce market, our response to churches in the South that needed to be rebuilt, our response to local forest fires, and the list goes on. For a small church, we do amazing work. Increasingly, throughout our diocese, we are recognized as people with extravagant generosity. I love you as a congregation. Not in a phylos way of close friends who love each other and have each other's back. As the priest in this congregation for the last four years, I have strived to live in agape love. My love for each of you is impartial. I'm thoroughly and passionately committed to each of you, regardless of what you do for this congregation or what you do for me. In the last few weeks, I've been reading a congregational development book where the author lists five practices of fruitful congregations. The five practices well describe St. Francis Church and are the lens of reflection for my annual sermon and address. These five practices are radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, and extravagant generosity. I've added one to these practices, long-term vision. All the other practices were already deep in your congregational DNA when I arrived four years ago. It has been my desire, and continues to be my desire, to nurture and grow these five, six practices and the fruit we bear as a congregation to proclaim the glory of God in all we do. In looking back at the past year, indeed the last four years, and ahead at the coming year, I want to say a few words about where we have been and the opportunities ahead of us for St. Francis Church to continue to live fully and to produce fruit from these six practices. Briefly, with each of these practices, I will state our history as a parish, where we are today, and the opportunity we have to grow as a congregation in Christ's love through even greater mercy, love, and justice for all in the body of Christ. You will also hear from me an invitation for us to grow into agape love, continuing in our journey so that all people hear us proclaim the glory of God through the people of St. Francis and our church campus center. Radical Hospitality For over 30 years, AA groups have known St. Francis Church for its hospitality when many other churches in our area refused welcome. Our church center has built its radical hospitality on the generous welcome of St. Francis Church. On this campus, we welcome faith traditions and cultures that, while distant from one another in their beliefs and mission, find a common home on our campus and in our church center. In the body of Christ, Paul says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. We are all companions of Jesus. In the body of St. Francis Church Center, they're not the Koreans, but the faithful people of Seiram Church. 
and our body is again growing as we prepare on March 1 to welcome Valley Redemptive Church. Our friend, Pastor Bryant, church is the result of two churches that had met in North Highlands and also in Folsom and now have merged into one church that will meet on our campus. We will not refer to Valley Redemptive as the African Americans or the Black Church, but as the faithful people of Valley Redemptive. With the arrival of Valley Redemptive Church, we are moving from a culture of leasing churches to a culture of shared fellowship and mission. With the arrival of Valley Redemptive Church, we are moving into another expression of our agape experience of love as we work for each of our congregations to flourish. With the arrival of Valley Redemptive Church, we will be increasingly challenged to live on this campus in ways that we do not live in our cities or in our nation. We are proclaiming God's glory in ways and by example that few live by in this day in polarized communities where black and white live apart. You will hear more about the details of Valley Redemptive in the Vest report, reports in the Parish Hall, which you can find on our website under Resources. Passionate Worship Worship has always been important for St. Francis. Your worship has always reflected your congregational life. Once the sanctuary was filled with children, but now our sanctuary is filled to the brim with collective wisdom of our age. Despite increasing gray hairs, yours, mine, we have a passion for worship that has not waned, but has flourished and grown. You have a palpable desire to express your determination and your joy, not just with your three concluding Alleluia's, but also in every aspect of our shared weekly Eucharist. Every worship service begins long before the first bell rings. Laura Simpkins, for part of the year, and Kathy Sheehan, more recently, organize our worship leaders in their ongoing formation. Our ushers and greeters create a warm welcome. Our altar guild prepares the altar in the morning. Our acolyte, Marie Gerhardt, prepares and is present at the altar with a graceful presence. Our musicians, Eunice, Megan, and Grant, along with our great choir, have made a huge contribution to the enhancement of our worship experience. The Vestry, in their 2016 budget, has made a major commitment to worship through their approval of additional weekly compensation for Eunice to lead a weekly choir practice on Tuesday afternoons. Based on the feedback of many in the congregation, the Vestry and I believe these dollars are well spent as we continue to enhance and develop our passionate worship. Our lay preachers and supply clergy, clergy who are carefully selected for their quality of preaching, reflect our passionate worship too. We will continue to discover new ways to live into our passion for worship. And I sense we are becoming more passionate with each week. Intentional faith development. Our church campus was literally designed for the faith formation needs of children. Today, our church campus continues to be modified for the needs of our church and member churches. This year, I'm offering not a Sunday school for children, but rather a Sunday school for adults. Just like children who you once prepared to live more fully into their life of faith and their family's convictions, it is my desire for our adult Sunday school on fourth Sundays to help all of us grow as a congregation into even greater ways to proclaim and demonstrate to even more people the glory of God lived out at St. Francis Church. As we expand our readiness to help more people encounter the glory of God in this place, 
we prepared to stretch our minds and hearts to talk about some things that this congregation has managed not to talk about openly with each other. On January 31st, we will begin Adult Formation Sundays. I've invited Dean Brian Baker to kick off the Adult Formation Program. When he comes to speak to us about changes to the marriage canon of the Episcopal Church, Dean Baker will not be speaking to us about gay marriage, but rather marriage, one right for all people in the Episcopal Church. Dean Baker has already met with the vestry to help us better understand the journey that the Church has been on for the last 40 years. Dean Baker, with my additional facilitation of the vestry, helped us connect where the church has been, what we learned as children, the ways we have changed or not, the ways we have met gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered people in our lives, in our work, and in our families. The vestry meeting with Dean Baker a few months ago was a new opening up of agape love at St. Francis. As a vestry, we were able to speak lovingly, respectfully, and peacefully to one another in a variety of beliefs and expressions. I have two goals in all of this. My goal is for the people of St. Francis to be able to peacefully and respectfully talk and listen to each other about things that matter, things that are difficult to talk about, particularly in the wide range of beliefs and ways of encounter. My goal for St. Francis is to find ways that we are able to offer agape love and the glory of God to all persons when they find our church. Every fourth Sunday, on a three-month cycle, we will have a keynote talk in the first month of the three-month cycle, table conversations in the second month, and in the third month, we will reflect on what we have learned and the impact on our shared life as a congregation. For example, in our table conversations, we will reflect on Dean Baker's talk and the way we have understood homosexuality through our families and our church, and in what ways we have changed, what ways we are the same, what ways we want to change, and what ways we don't want to change. On the final Sunday of the Three Sunday Adult Formation Cycle, we will ask one another, what does all our learning mean for our shared life at St. Francis? What will we do the same as we have been doing in the past? And what will we do differently? How will we choose to minister and proclaim God's glory to all people who are drawn to the mercy and love of our undeterred joy? in Jesus here at St. Francis. Risk-taking, mission, and service. Every parish once began with a group of members who risked starting a new church and building a new building. Often, once the new church is built, the original risk-taking that inspired the first mission becomes domesticated, and the church becomes settled in its comfortable routines. Sometimes the church becomes so settled, it does not even recognize when it's in decline. St. Francis has a courageous vestry and is still ready to take some risks. We are among the first congregations to have outreach principles that we follow to make decisions on where we contribute. It was with great courage of not only the vestry, but also our volunteers that last March were able to launch the senior produce market with Episcopal Senior Communities as our partner. The co-leaders, Beth Hamley and Mary Ann Legate, have maintained their spirit through a variety of challenges, including a steady but small number of shoppers. We could have said, we're too small a congregation to have our own market. But while small in numbers, we have trust that God provides. The senior produce market has provided a midweek social where our members and neighbors 
cross paths and nurture each other. As we approach our first anniversary on March 15th, we will honor and celebrate the incredible, relentless spirit of our volunteers. Due to the Vestry willingness to invest $2,500 in advertising in the 2016 budget, and Mary Lee Pennington's extraordinary media connections and unrelentless energy and spirit, we are working to grow the number of shoppers to the market through publicity and becoming more visible. Visible for our market and visible for our church. In the next few weeks, you will begin to see St. Francis advertisements for our worship services and the senior produce market in our local newspapers through the, throughout this area of Sacramento. We could have said, we're too small a congregation to feed the homeless and take our place on the line with Winter Sanctuary. But your vestry instead made the spirited decision to try to make a difference with our few helping hands. This year, this year we make an important step as we move beyond the doors of our church and the impact of our dollars to serve homeless face to face. Extravagant generosity. There are very few congregations of our size that have, like us, reached 10% outreach. Now for our second year, and budgeted for a third year. St. Francis is quickly becoming known in the Episcopal Diocese of Northern California, in our deanery and in Greater Sacramento, as a leader in outreach. Given our growing reputation for extravagant generosity and outreach, we were recently contacted by Dean Baker at Trinity Cathedral to participate in a leadership challenge for Sacramento Habitat for Humanity. The other congregations that were contacted were congregations with many more members than we have, significantly more pledge. And yet, we were part of phase one with a $1,000 contribution from our parish. The Leadership Challenge matches the church center campus where people across many differences are able to peacefully live together. Long-term vision. The reports you will read on the parish website from our vestry who presented at annual meeting Sunday on Sunday, January 24th. We heard from Keith Cottle, our senior warden, and Chair of the Viability and Sustainability Subcommittee. Laura Simpkins, our Junior Warding and Membership Coordinator. Ron Hankins, our Treasurer, and Judy Utter, our Mission and Vitality Subcommittee Chair. All these leaders have long-term vision and at the same time live fully in the grace that God gives us each day. Very few vestries in this diocese or across the church have leaders as equipped as these men and women to address the challenges of being church today. At every vestry meeting over the last few years, we face complex financial and mission challenges that require new skills, enormous energy, and saintly patience. Many hours go into the preparation of every vestry meeting. Our treasurer spends 25, 50 hours a month on these matters. Senior warding meeting with me on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. Outreach committee, multiple meetings to make prudent, generous, compassionate decisions. The officers of the vestry, Keith, Laura, Ron, and Judy, you exemplify the leadership necessary for viable and sustainable congregational life. Our clerk, Marianne O'Kane, is a meticulous minute taker with high standards of excellence and timeliness. Judith Richardson has offered several years of tireless work as our bookkeeper and is now training Carolyn Mansell in these responsibilities. At our annual meeting, we celebrated the accomplishments and service of our departing vestry members, Alva Kennedy, Mary Musell, 
and Laura Simpkins. Wardens and Vestry, I'm honored to serve with you in your relentless hope, determination, patience, joy, and empowerment for me to effectively serve all of you at this time in this parish's history. In conclusion, the state of our union as St. Francis Church is strong and growing even stronger. God is with us in our joy and also in our strength. God has anointed the people of St. Francis with a bold mission through our parish and our church center that no other church in this diocese or even across the state of California can match. We are becoming a place where people of many faiths, cultures, and races come to experience the mercy, love, and glory of God. And God will continue to be good even when we struggle to be who we are called to be. It will be a journey. There will be some struggles, but God will be present. God will be ever present as we stretch out our hands to build even a bigger tent for the glory of God's love to be held in this place. And God will not break us. We will continue to grow in agape love. Over the last few months, the vestry and I read and reflected on the book, More Church with Less Church. We learned how to be more aware about doing more accompanied by greater impact with fewer resources and less energy with our diminished numbers. Given all of our risk-taking and outreach and extravagant generosity, we have to also be mindful to take good care of ourselves. I will do my part to help us do so. One of my New Year's church resolutions is to have fewer meetings. My priority meetings will be our monthly town hall, our vestry, and our adult formation Sundays. In closing, St. Francis has never been stronger spiritually, theologically, and missionally in our understanding and practice of being God's church. We should continue to boldly co proclaim and express our alleluias. Even more so, God expresses relentless joy in the people of St. Francis Church. As God says to us every day of the week, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God bless you.